ourselves and the resilience of the human spirit will prevail uh, even though there will be um, some some pain, some hurt, some challenges. Uh, we will return to our courage, courage, the, the heart of who we are. Mm. Well, I just love that image too. Um, it, it seems like uh, us humans uh, have a tendency of coming together with a common enemy. It seems like it pulls a people or a group or a family together if you have a common threat. And as you speak, it's it's just quite the opposite, isn't it? It's a need for an understanding that we no longer need the enemy. Um, yeah. And that's that we are part of everyone. Right. It's, it's really moving from fear to love, from the love of power to the power of love. It's 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 a uh, it, it 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 has the power because it's so gigantic. No one can escape it. Mm-hmm. You know, the thing that some people deny called climate change is the change in the climate of the understanding of who we are. Hmm. It's the climate of our own being. Uh, that's the real climate change, and it's a it's a climate transformation. And I welcome it, and I uh, and I know it's going to be challenging. But you know, when you think about people who go to the Olympics, rather than use a war analogy, I want to use an Olympic analogy. When people say they want to be the best they can possibly be, it's painful. It hurts. It's you know, there's injuries. There's you know, sweat and tears and incredible uh, challenges. But the what comes of it is is worth every single minute. And hmm. that's kind of this is like the Olympics for the human family. <laughs> that's nice. I like the idea. Um, yes, we're, we're we're sweating. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and I guess that that's the really cool part, isn't it, Lynn? I mean, to to really recognize, and the more we reach out, the more we understand this, the more we reach out to each other, the easier, the more resilient um, this transition uh, can be. Right, and the job really, you know, is to hospice the natural death of the systems and structures that really were so clear no longer serve us. And they are dying. They're becoming dysfunctional. They're, you know, the, the banking system, the crony system, the, you know, all the things that are just so, we know they don't work. They are dying. But to hospice their natural death <laughs> and to midwife yeah. the of the new systems and structures that we now understand will support the future of life itself. So it's a it's the work of hospice and midwife, and those both are acts of witness and love. Um, to hospice the death of the old structures and systems that no longer serve us, while we midwife the birth of the new structures and systems that are consistent with a, uh, a thriving, just, and sustainable way of life. Mm-hmm. It's it's a beautiful thing to hospice and to midwife, and that's the job of our time in our own lives in our communities and in the world, and we that's a, a job of relatedness, of mm-hmm. missing, of being there for each other. That's really where our joy comes from. That's where our, our, our transformation always exists, and that's really the source of our prosperity as well. So I, I was just thinking that um, p- part of that, the old systems that are, that are being laid to rest, is that they... It's not that they don't want to change. It's that they don't know how to change. I think so. I mean, you know, it depends on which we're, systems we're talking about, but most of them were born in this you or me paradigm, uh, born in a, in a belief in scarcity and uh, 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 with a recognition that fear is the driver. And that, you know, that, that has some real effectiveness and has really manipulated us for so long but now that's just not valid and Mm -hmm. um and so we we need to re it's almost we need to resource 
the institutions of humankind from a different place, from a completely different ground of being. You know, before the um, Internet and before quantum physics and before the theory of relativity and before discovering we were uh, revolving around the sun rather than the sun was revolving around us, you know, things started stopped making sense and then we had a revelation and we realized oh my god we we, we kind of had it wrong the uh the sun is not revolving around the earth the earth is revolving around the sun. holy moly that changes everything and it kind of now everything kind of makes sense in a new way mm-hmm. and and in the discovery of theory of relativity the discovery of quantum physics that you know this open source miracle of the internet these are things that actually change the very system of belief and the, the very fundamental understanding of the world and that's kind of what I'm talking about here um, the internet itself is such an example of it is taking down it's not attacking but it's 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 allowing the old structures and systems old monopolies to die to become irrelevant and to die their natural death while the open source access for everybody to everything, free uh, and available, is is, the, is we're hospicing that into existence. Now, of course, the Internet also has its dark side like everything else, but if you really think about it, this is all happening now. Mm-hmm. You know, the old banking system where you had to go into the bank and talk to somebody you were scared of to get a loan, all of those things are starting to the breakdown now and you can crowdsource real estate I mean there's so many things that are that are 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 examples of what I'm talking about but I I'm I'm really clear there has never ever been a time with this seismic you know so deeply fundamental transformation and what a thrill to be part of it what a thrill to hospice and midwife mm-hmm. uh, this period of time in whatever way we can in our own lives, in our communities, in our states, in our countries, and in our world. Wow. And and, and um, to midwife, the greatest abilities or the greatest qualities of, of a midwife is, what is that? Is, again, compassion, understanding, yes. um, love. Yes. In but some this, cases, the institutions are dying. In some cases, the systems inside them are dying and the institution can survive mm-hmm. and thrive. Um, and it, yeah, and it seems like the spirit lives. I mean, the spirit of, of the ingenuity uh, will continue and maybe transform. Yes, right. Right. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's, I, 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 like the, I like the idea. And, and then the midwives, the preparation for new uh, ways, new methods of being able to see ourselves in a way that we are connected, that we are a community, that we are no longer yeah. uh, separatists. Um, it's very difficult to live a separatist identity uh, today with the Internet. It's so obvious that we're all interconnected. It is almost like the, uh, the mirror image of, um, of, you know, I work in the rainforest now, so the rainforest is, so such a teacher everything depends on everything else that which is dying is food for the next thing that's that's being born and not just the animals but the plants the decomposition of everything is the food for the next uh, evolutionary moment and the beauty of of really letting go of trying to hold on to things that are that are ready to go and compost them into the next thing. I mean, you know, compost is so beautiful when you think about it. There's, there's this wonderful phrase we use in one of our Pachamama programs called the Awakening the Dreamer Symposium, that we've had an unconscious, unexamined assumption that you could actually throw something away. But where is a way? There's no such place. Hmm. You can't throw anything away. You you know, that there's no way. And we've begun to realize that. There's the opportunity to compost, to transform, to renew, reuse, recreate, repurpose. Uh, and everything has value. Even that, even the institutions that are dying, they can be composted into 
uh, beautiful, new, exquisite expressions of what their original purpose was. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's really what's happening. It's, it's, it's like a giant rainforest. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful. And as a matter of fact, the, the life of a, a caterpillar... Uh, goes through a kind oh, yeah. of a, a metamorphosis, uh, perhaps mm-hmm. on a willing way, you know, who knows. And uh, they can be going through, they can willfully go through a transformation uh, themselves and recreate themselves in a way that will be, uh, what was that word, um, resilient or sustainable. Yeah. Right. And the wonderful metaphor that you're using with the caterpillar, is it is true that the caterpillar at a certain point in its evolutionary path, every caterpillar becomes an overconsumptive, voracious little monster that eats every, <laughs> everything in sight. And a, a caterpillar, just an everyday caterpillar, will, at a, a certain point in its, its, its journey of, of life, eat hundreds of times its own weight mm-hmm. and become this bulky, brown, little, fat guy... <laughs> Uh, overconsumptive monster, and at that point in in the caterpillar's evolution, the imaginal cells inside the caterpillar, imaginal cell like imagine, kick in, and uh, even though they're in the minority, their job is to find each other so that they cluster enough that they can become the genetic directors of the future of the caterpillar. And the other cells, when the imaginal cells cluster enough then surrender and become the nutritive soup out of which the little fat brown caterpillar creates the absolute miracle through the imaginal cells now being in charge of the caterpillar's future, the absolute miracle of a butterfly, unpredictable miracle of a butterfly. Wow. And that is your show and you and the people you have on your show and the people listening to your show are, I say, imaginal cells. Um the imaginal cells in the in the body of the caterpillar of our culture uh and uh and if we're awake and we cluster like we do around your message and the message of the people that you bring on your show mm-hmm. we be genetic directors of the future of the caterpillar and we can create the unpredictable miracle of a butterfly how fun yeah what a fun way of looking at that. What a wonderful way of looking at that. I love it. Thank you, Lynn. And in every caterpillar does not become a butterfly. I've learned this from evolutionary biologists. In the ones that don't die fat, chubby little brown worms because <laughs> the imaginal cells did not cluster and find each other enough. So it's really important, if we use that metaphor from nature... Mm-hmm. For the imaginal cells, the people who are awake, the people who are conscious, to cluster, find each other, and wake other people up, to create enough of a of a critical mass. It doesn't need to be the majority, but a critical mass mm-hmm. that can midwife the the society, the culture, the civilization into the butterfly that we want to become. I've never heard that before. This is um, what a wonderful image. And and what a yeah. perf- what a purpose that would be, to be something so small as a cell, and to have such a great great um, role in in uh, joining with others, into creating ourselves into something that we don't quite know, <laughs> but but we absolutely feel. We, well, we, that is exactly who you are, Slade. Because I, you know, that's what you're doing. That's what your show is all about. That's. I think why you love this work so much, because you're one of the imaginal cells gathering the other imaginal cells and making sure everybody out there who's conscious enough to become an imaginal cell has a shot at it, because I feel like that's really what you're doing. And Elizabeth Satoris, who's a very, very brilliant evolutionary biologist, and Nori Huddle, who's another evolutionary evolutionary biologist, you know, they've, they've educated many of us about this uh, caterpillar butterfly biological truth and it's uh, and both of them and others Willis Harmon have applied it to the um, evolution of humankind right now and I'm I'm um, I'm really clear that's what you're doing wow. I hope it's what I'm doing <laughs> we're clustering together Len <laughs> <Yes>. stay close <laughs> 
Okay, so 